I am heading up the street. I need to uh, stick my head into Ikea. My friend, she asked me to look up a little step ladder to see if they had them. And hey, I have nothing but time. So I'm gonna go in there and check it out for her. This is the time to be out walking around. The uh, sun went down, whatever it was, 45 minutes ago. Yeah, it definitely cools down 10, 15 degrees. It's still probably in the 80s, but compared to the heat of the day, 82, all of a sudden feels very cool. And right across the street is the fancy Carlton Hotel. There's also, next to that tailor shop, Jaws Fashions, is a Prime Burger. That's probably my, I'll say my number one. Between that and Easy Burger, I mean, there's some good burgers around town, but Prime Burger, it's just always good. They have a, a homemade coleslaw. And oftentimes on walk-in, they'll have a, not oftentimes, every time, they'll have a daily special. If it's the Paris Burger, the Stockholm, or the Bangkok, you, you pick the one you want. But that Stockholm, for instance, every time I go in there, it seems to be on special. It's still going to be, let's call it 300 baht, something like that, with coleslaw and assorted fries. They have a sweet potato fry that is just killer. I try not to eat a ton of Western food. I, I'll eat it. Pizza, burgers, whatever. I, I'm not going to pretend I'm moving to Bangkok and I'm just going to eat a 60 baht chicken and rice meal every day. That, to me, would be about as boring as eating a burger every day. But I'm probably 50-50. Western food and cheaper local food, it doesn't even have to be Thai. There are food court options. Japanese, Korean, Indian. I'm not real big on the cheapest Indian food. I'll, I'll pay a little top dollar for that. But the different chicken and rice dishes, the noodle soups, I'll eat that all day long. But on different Facebook groups and uh, YouTube comments, you'll, you'll hear people saying, you're living like an American in, in Thailand and all. Well, that's really none of their business. If you're from the US or Australia, the UK, you eat anything you want to eat anytime you want to eat it. Just factor it in on your budget. Not everybody is uh, trying to live on $1,500 a month and moving to Thailand and, and eating like a Thai person does every single day. If, if you want to live like a Thai person or an average Thai person, you better try living on five, six, seven hundred dollars $700 US a month. Not $1,500, not $2,000. That's not what a lot of Thai folks are doing. The, the majority of them are, are living on much less. So if you're spending 1,500 bucks, you're living like a Westerner as well. That's just my opinion and my two cents, but spend what you wanna spend. I mean, you can't take it with you. We all wanna leave a little money behind to loved ones. But sure, if you want a prime burger once in a while or, or a nice uh, Sunday roast special over at the Irish pub, I love all those things and I eat it anytime I want. I'm more concerned about trying to eat healthy more than what it costs. And as much as I love Thai food, a, a lot of it is cooked in heavy oils and uh, just, it's not, it's not the greatest food for you. I mean, a burger certainly isn't, but yeah, if I want to have a nice uh, chopped smoked ham salad or something once in a while, that's probably a little better for me than eating a whole large pizza. Oh, and I should have mentioned this prime burger. I think there's another one up in Tong Law. It's also uh, great with Grab. You don't get that daily special on Grab. And the other issue with Grab food delivery, if you've never used it, oftentimes it'll say prime burger is closed or it's closing in five minutes at 10 p.m. This particular prime burger I happen to know stays open till 2 a.m. They just stop with the food delivery at 10 a.m. I think they have enough walk-in customers. And here's a fancy looking massage place, the Da Ra Spa Sukhumvit. It is almost at the corner of Soy 22. But even these fancy spots, they're gonna come at a, a cheap rate compared to Western massage. I'll get up there and take a peek at the menu when this uh, young lady's done looking at it. You can probably get uh, 250 baht for an hour of Thai massage at a thousand places in Bangkok, much less around Thailand. But if you want a higher end spa, it's going to come at a little bit higher rate. But for a special 
day or special pampering gift, that may, might be a nice option. A huge Indian food guy. I, I seem to eat it once a month. This Indian SS Art or Indian Grill, right almost at the top of Soy 22. I have had two or three meals in there and it was delicious. So I can point you in that direction, but once again, I'm not any kind of Indian food expert. And on the other side of the street is the El Toro Steakhouse. If you're heading out for a special evening and you're not gonna mind paying $80 US, 100 bucks, I, I'm not sure, I've never ate in there. I think I, had a, well, I think I had a steak sandwich in there one time. It's going to be some of the finest beef in town. It's an Argentinian, I believe, or Brazilian steakhouse, or maybe Argentinian slash Brazilian. Anyhow, I'm not sure if that meat is brought in from Brazil, maybe or if it's Australian, that's some of the finer steak around town, but you're gonna pay top dollar at El Toro. But once again, might be worth it for that special night. And here's the auto bar. There's two little auto bars. They bought their neighbor, but this one closest to me, it has the heavy metal cover band, I think every night of the week. Well, I don't know. I think I came in here on a Wednesday and there was no band, but let's say five nights out of the week past 9 p.m. or so, and they'll go till two in the morning. Great place for, uh, well, they'll play everything. For, I'm saying heavy metal, but they'll play Sex Pistols, Nirvana, and then they'll play Iron Maiden and Megadeth. And this is looking up Sukhavet Soy 22. I'll guess 75, 100 little beer bars all the way from here down to Rama 4. Really fun place to uh, go bar hopping. Also on the corner of 22 is the Holiday Inn. They have a nice rooftop. I don't know if they have a pool up there. I assume they do from the overhang. I don't know if it's uh, making out in this low light. There's another shot of the uh, El Toro. When you walk in or in the window, they have all the different dry age cuts, you know, like you see hanging in Vegas. This is one month old, this is six months old, if that's a thing. Myself, I'm a 500 baht Irish pub steak guy. It's a, a smaller Australian cut, tastes delicious, and 500 baht's fine with me. And once again, I know for 500 baht, I can eat for two weeks up out in the country somewhere just eating Thai food every day. Don't be a stupid expat and try to live like a Westerner. I don't agree with that. I, I am from the United States. If I were to take somebody from Thailand to the United States, it would probably be foolish of me to expect them to eat grits and beans or, you know, whatever is the local fare and never eat Thai food or Asian food again. No different than myself moving over to Thailand. Sure, you have to little, use a little bit of common sense. Your most affordable rates are going to be with the local food. But that doesn't mean I don't want to eat a rack of ribs once in a while or have a steak. So don't put that kind of pressure on yourself. Just be real careful when you watch these different YouTube videos, including my own. I mean, of course, make your own decisions, but guys that are like, I live on whatever it is, a fill in the blank, $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 a month, whatever it is. And by the way, $3,000 is, is my number for just kind of doing anything I want to do. I, I do what I can to save money. I'm certainly not trying to waste money as I'm not earning money for the rest of my life. But yeah, I'm lucky. I have some pensions. I have some money put away. So I don't try to live on $2,000 uh, a month, which is $24,000 a year. I'm not living on $124,000 a year anymore, that's for sure, but double the 24 or 36,000, that's not totally unreasonable if you wanna have a steak once in a while. And that is the relatively new Empsphere Mall. I'm heading into the Ikea. And somebody had made a comment, it got me to thinking, I'm not gonna change what I do, but they said, why do you always talk in US dollars and not Thai bot. I mean, this person said, I quickly adjusted to saying my rent is 19,000 Thai bot, not my rent is 500 US dollars the second I moved here. Well, that's all fine, but this is a channel called The Eager Expat, and probably people that find me on YouTube are considering becoming expats. Again, I'm from the US, so I can't quickly say, my apartment is this many uh, British pounds or this many Australian dollars. Most people kind of have a rough idea when I say 500 US dollars, what that is in their local currency, if it's Canada, whichever. But many people, I'll say 
90% of people have no idea what the Thai baht is compared to the US dollar, much less the Australian dollar. And then it even gets a little more complicated because the baht fluctuates oftentimes in a big way. Right now it's pretty darn high, 36, 37 to one. It can drop down to 34 to one tomorrow. So that means today's rent, I think it's about a little under 500 bucks, let's call it 495, could very easily be 575 tomorrow in US dollars. I'm just keeping it simple, throwing it out there that this hotel is maybe 40 US dollars and you can do the conversion in Thai baht. I don't want to confuse anybody uh, and I'm not, I'm certainly not trying to insult anybody. We were all new before, you know, we've came to Thailand for our first trip and, and now we're an expert on Thailand. I, I don't feel that way at all, but some people in the comment section do and, and you know, they like to, uh, why, why are you eating Western food in Thailand? You, you're, you're living like an American on and on. Hey, do what you want to do. If you want to pretend to be Thai, well, yeah, live on 20, 25,000 baht a month, which is uh, whatever that is, five, $600, and stop living on, on twice that or three times that amount and think you're living like a local Thai. You're just not. The Thai, I think it's Thai Visa face group, famous for those kind of people. They just like to, keyboard warriors. They just like to sit there and insult everybody. When you arrive from most countries, I don't know what it is, 70 or 90 countries, something like that, you get a 30-day visa exempt stamp. It's not a visa, it's a visa exempt. It, you, it's welcome to Thailand, you have 30 days. If you want 30 more, go to immigration, pay 1,900 baht and get a 30-day extension on your visa exempt. So people in that Facebook group will often say, when I arrive and get my 30-day visa, you know, then what happens? And there'll be 27 comments on, you are not getting a visa. I know much more than you, blah, blah, blah. So take all that with a grain of salt. There's also some normal people on there, but for whatever reason, I don't know if it's people move over here to Thailand or the Philippines or whatever, and you know, they, take their bumps along the way. I've been here two years now full time and uh, I've certainly made mistakes and I try to share those mistakes. Not so much. I guess the reason is so learn from my mistakes. Don't, don't do the same stupid thing I did. But other people, they're never gonna tell you the mistakes they made but they will be the first one on a Facebook or Reddit chat group to call you stupid because you don't know, you know, the difference between this visa or visa exempt or whatever. So don't let any of that bother you. 99.9% .9 of the people you're gonna meet and hang out with over here are very normal people. I mean, just nice, nice people. I, I maybe know of one guy out of 500 who I don't care to hang out or, with again. The other guys, some of them are gonna be lifelong friends. So don't let that put you off at all. You do not have to be any kind of an expert. Just understand the basics so you don't waste money. You can certainly do things and, and just automatically lose 75 US dollars compared to doing it the other way. Like when you take money out of an ATM, you always want to say in local currency, if you say take it out in US currency or Australian, whatever, you're gonna lose a lot of money. So just little tips like that. But if you were to ask that question in a Reddit Facebook group, it would be, what kind of moron are you? You need to just stay home if you don't understand how an ATM works in Thailand. Forget those people, just ignore them. Don't let them bother you. Those people probably aren't even in Thailand anymore. Maybe they lived here for three years, ran out of money, and they're back living in their mom's basement. And they have nothing better to do than uh, put you or me down, the normal people. And they put a Shake Shack in here if you're a fan. I don't know, is that from Texas? I know it's, well, I don't know. I think it's a U.S. chain. I think we have a Shake Shack in San Diego, but yeah, if I'm up for a greasy burger in San Diego or, or most places, if they have one, I'm heading to In-N-Out Burger myself. And I actually got a little bit excited. Last year, they had an In-N-Out pop-up here in Bangkok. It was at Central World. They ran out of fries and were serving the In-N-Out burgers with uh, Lay's potato chips. I, from what I read online, there was still a line of an hour and a half to get that burger. It, it was a one-day pop-up, but yeah, I think it showed it was pretty darn successful. So hopefully at some point they'll get a, an in and out over here. That'd be something else. 
And yes, I will gladly pay 350 baht for my in and out combo. And the guy in uh, Isan or, or whatnot yelling at me that I'm living like a Westerner. I don't really care what that guy says. I mean, I agree personally that you don't want to move to Thailand and just eat McDonald's, Subway, and, and Western food every single day. I mean, yeah, that's, in my personal belief, a little silly. But again, I don't tell another person how to spend their money. If you want to do that, absolutely, you do it. But factor in three, four times the amount of money you think you're going to spend on food when you're watching these different YouTube guys, if you're only going to eat at McDonald's every day. Plus, I would factor in a good health insurance policy for Bummergrad. If you're eating burgers every day, you're probably going to be making frequent visits. That being said, a 50-50% mix of more local, affordable food and, and different Western options, that, to me, is not unreasonable at all. And, and that is about the same thing most of my friends do. Even when we're inside a, a sports bar or a British pub, I'll oftentimes order Thai food. It's just... It's going to cost more. It's not going to be 60 baht street food, but 60 baht street food is also a very small portion where some of these British pubs, they're catering to expats. So when you order a pad thai chicken, they're bringing you a big gigantic portion, maybe three portions of what you'd get for 60 baht on that street food. Plus you're hanging out, having some pints and, and watching the game. I don't mind paying a little extra for a more premium Thai dish, let's put it that way. And the same can be said for your condo. Myself, I pay 19,000 baht. Other people might say, oh, in, in Wahin, you can live like a king for a 7,000 baht condo. Okay, well, I don't wanna live in Wahin right now. Maybe someday, it's a fine city. I like the water, but I'm living in a more expensive city and I want a little bit larger place. I can have a smaller place here for 10,000 baht. I looked at those places. And a 52 meter for 19,000 baht is a very reasonable compromise to me. Again, it's not a contest on how to live in Thailand for XYZ money, whatever that figure is. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 is thrown about. It's not a contest at all. And if you're a person living here for 1,000 US a month, probably the last thing you should be doing is telling a guy who's living for $2,000 He's doing it all wrong, and you need to do it like me, and on and on. I certainly wouldn't want to live here for 1,000 US dollars. To me, that's just getting by. That's surviving. I don't care if you're in the country in Isan. That's just the bare, basic survival. I, that's just how I look at it, but I'm the only person I need to worry about. And personally, I want to live in Bangkok, and I want to take multiple trips a month, and I want to live in a halfway nice place. I also want to eat western food i'll call it 50 percent of the time it's probably less i don't keep track of it i eat what i want to eat when i want to eat it tonight i'm eating thai food that's what i feel like you could just look at this mall for an example this little pizza place it has as many thai customers as as different expats i hang out with a lot of thai friends and sure they like going to charlie brown's mexican food or different italian spots it, it just is what it is and here's the uh, celebrity chef, Gordon Ramsay, Bread Street. He also has a pizza place upstairs. Even these, I won't say higher end, but it's definitely uh, not fast food. They're going to be affordable. If you're a food person, like heading out and, and trying different restaurants two, three, four times a week, yeah, it's going to be a terrific savings compared to California. Shoot, I ate at a couple of restaurants in Sydney. That was some... That was some high-end meals, even compared to California. But come over to Gordon Ramsay's, get a bottle of wine. It's it's still going to be way less than $100 for two. And that doesn't happen in California any, anymore. But just the bottom line of you're moving to Thailand and still trying to live like an American or an Australian, eh, I, I don't buy that. I've had common sense my entire life. I've had houses, condos. I lived on a small sailboat for years. I probably enjoyed living on the small sailboat most of all. So you know what you want to do, but uh, 
most people that are living in a, I don't know what it translates to in meters, a, a 2,500 square foot house in the United States, no, they're not looking, I guess maybe some people, but I'll say the majority of people are not moving to Thailand and saying, I must have at least a 1,800 square foot uh, condo. For one thing, they're few and far between, and it's going to be five times as much as the average condo. That is maybe a person who uh, is trying to still live like they live in the U.S. and Thailand. And again, that's their business. But the majority of people that move over and, um, I don't know, there was one comment in my video. Some guy said, I'm paying $450 U.S. for my condo in Pattaya. And this guy left a comment saying, well, you're wasting money. You're still trying to live like an American and whatnot. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, that sounds like a very reasonable amount of rent. I mean... I'm paying more. I'm I, well, a little bit more, but yeah. I'm assuming this other guy is paying $175 somewhere in, in the country in, in Thailand, or he said it was in Chiang Mai. But even so, who cares? That's how he's living, and the other guy wants to live in a maybe a high-rise right overlooking the beautiful water in Pattaya, and that's not going to be $175. So I have no problem with how. Anybody watching any of these videos wants to spend their money. I'm going to be the last person to wave my finger at you. If, if I tell you what I do, I'm just telling you what I do. And what you do, that's up to you. You'll oftentimes hear uh, YouTubers talking about a 300% import fee. And that's all very real. This BMW, it's going to come at a much higher cost here in the kingdom of Thailand than in the U.S. I don't know, Australia or the U.K., but it's going to be very expensive. A lot of people retire and they come over here and buy a, a big, expensive, expensive to me anyhow, sixty, seventy thousand dollar, even if it's forty-five thousand dollar SUV, and that's fine if that's what they want to do is just drive all around Thailand. Great, have a great time. But myself, I usually own two cars, not only one. There's always been a backup in case I needed a backup. And in the last two years, I have not missed driving at all. At some point, I'm probably going to get my legal Thai license and rent cars, or I'm hanging out with Boone. Boone has her driver's license, but I would like to uh, drive because I miss driving. And but I'm in no big hurry to go spend even say twenty thousand on a good used car. It's just so cheap to rent. I mean. I'll probably rent cars for, say, a year, and if I find I'm just spending too much on rentals, well, then maybe I'll consider uh, purchasing a car. But for now, no. I, I'll probably rent a car three times, five times a year. Again, other people that drive five times a week, yeah, it's worth it to them. But I'm living in, in Bangkok right now. This is the last place where I want to be driving. Hey, and don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm grateful for all the comments. Even, even that person, I think it was up in Chiang Mai, who was saying... I think he said myself and somebody else, we're, we're still trying to live like Americans and we need to be more Thai. Or I, I don't know what he was saying. I respectfully disagreed and we went back and forth and, and left it on a civil note. But it's just interesting to me. I do have this YouTube channel and I'm, I'm grateful for everybody who watches. And I probably, I try to answer every single comment. If you've left the comment, I've probably answered it. If not... I didn't get it. Um, sometimes YouTube, especially if you leave a second comment to my answer, in other words, you asked me something or made a comment, I replied, and then you replied to my comment. For whatever reason, that third comment in the thread, YouTube oftentimes does not show me for a week at a time, and then sometimes it gets lost in the shuffle. If you want to leave me a comment, I'm going to answer it. But then leave me a fresh new comment. Don't reply to what I said, or I'll guess it's a 75% chance I'll get the comment. I'm not ignoring what you said. I just don't see it. And not that I'm that super popular a channel, but even my smaller channel, sometimes I answer 20 or 30 comments a day, sometimes 10, but I do take the time to answer them. I understand larger channels, it must be impossible and you'll see different people ask a question and then another people will say, hey, don't bother. This guy doesn't bother answering his comments. Well, he might be getting 1,000 comments a day. 
So take it easy on the guy. I know where he's coming from. If you've never had a YouTube channel and uh, seen those comments come in every day, you, you don't know how much work it would be to try to answer 1,000 comments. So the bottom line is, uh, is my friend who left that comment up in Chiang Mai or, or anybody else, and I've, I've heard the same thing over and over, and I've read it on different, like I say, Facebook and Reddit groups. And maybe I'm coming across as a little bit of, uh, eh, those guys are blowhards or they're know-it-alls or whatever, just ignore them. I don't really mean to do that. They're entitled to their opinion, but I just 100% disagree. There's no set rules on moving to Thailand and if, if you don't do it like the guy next door, you're doing it wrong. Do what you want to do. Spend what you need to spend. Of course, there's common sense things. Don't Common sense to me would be don't come to Thailand and, and eat Western food every single day because there's just so many better options that are more affordable. Learn what you like with the local dishes. I mean, they'll come with a fancy Thai name, but it might mean chicken and rice with a fried egg on top. It's not that complicated. And I've ducked into the Ikea. Why is this guy shopping at Ikea? He should be shopping at the local night market like me. All he does is waste money, blah, blah, blah. And to that I answer, I retired at 56 but because I've always been pretty good with money, including walking into the Ikea. The first thing I come to is the as-is corner or the retired, retired, the uh, return section. So this desk saved 50%, 5,500 baht. That's kind of a cool desk. As the store has uh, been here, whatever it is, three, four, six months, they're getting a larger as-is section. Yeah, nothing wrong with coming down here and uh, seeing if that lamp you need, you can get for 50% off because uh, somebody took it home and returned it. But this guy's wasting money up in Isan. I use a candle for light. What's he thinking? And I'm just halfway kidding around. I, I, it's just real interesting with these uh, comment sections. And when you move over here, you're going to bump into these guys once in a while. The uh, barstool commandos, whatever it is. Oh, you're just moving here? Eh, you should have been here 10 years ago. It sucks today, on and on. This beer used to be 10 cents in 1980. Whatever it is, just try to ignore all those people. They're, uh, they're having a hard time in life and putting you down is the only thing that kind of makes them feel better about themselves. I mean, you'll hear it all. You'll hear, oh, you're paying three times as much rent as I do, and you're an idiot, and oh, you'll learn. Stop stop trying to live like a Westerner, on and on. Yeah, you'll hear it all. You'll hear, you wasted money doing this, using an agent, doing X, Y, Z. I mean, I put out a video on, you don't need an agent to get your nano for retirement i did it and i'm not going to say it's going to work the exact way for you but here it is steps one through 42 and i got comments from you don't know what you're talking about it, it it's way more complicated than that or just the opposite what do you mean 42 steps and i'm exaggerating if it's eight steps whatever it is but i i'm a little bit more thorough i come from a military background so i make copies of everything and then when they put a new stamp in my paperwork uh, passport. I make copies of that, and I keep a copy in my wallet. There's going to be no question from anybody at any time, if I get in a little fender bender or whatever it is, that I'm here legally and, and on and on. I just have the simple proof shrunk down and folded up in, in my wallet with a copy of my passport. I might mention something like that, and it'll just be comments, uh, I've lived here 32 years and nobody's ever asked to see a copy of uh, my current visa stamp, whatever. But it does happen. It recently happened in, in Padilla, and I know it happened down on Soy Cowboy. So the guy leaving that comment, he might be living on some little rice farm up in the middle of no place. And he's making a comment to some guy living in, in Bangkok who travels often that... Uh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. So just take all that with a grain of salt and, and don't worry about it. Just come over, do the best you can, make your mistakes, do some $200 errors and, and learn from it or hopefully learn from the errors I made. 
I did kind of treat myself uh, three or four months back, 7,000 baht for this Sonos speaker with a light combination, but yeah, it's beautiful, and I'm glad I did. I use that thing every day. The Sonos speakers, though, they do not work on Bluetooth. I was a little surprised. You have to, unless I don't know what I'm talking about, I, I read online they do not work on Bluetooth. They only work through the Sonos app, and then you have to link in, in my case, Spotify. But I wanted to uh, play YouTube music through the speaker. I think there's a third-party app that I haven't figured out how to use, but it's certainly not as easy as uh, just pressing the Bluetooth and, and syncing up your phone, that kind of thing. It has to go through an app, in my case, Spotify. That brings up an example. I, I don't blow a ton of money, but if I want a 7,000 baht speaker once in a while, I'm going to buy it. I mean, I just am. I'm on not that limited of a budget. Again, I'm not buying those things every week. I am a retired person and I'm kind of on a budget, but it's not so tight that uh, whatever. If I want a new cell phone, I'm going to go buy it. And that's just going to be a, a lot more difficult on, say, a $2,000 budget when I'm saying, well, my budget's $3,000, $3,500, 4 on a bad month, $2,500 on a good month. And you know, another person is saying, well, you're just blowing money. I, maybe I am, but I did the same thing in the U.S. If, if you call buying a new phone every three years blowing money, I personally do not. And I certainly didn't mean to turn this into a rant. I think it's just important for people that are considering being an expat. If it's here, Mexico, Peru, Colombia, whatever, you're going to get people waving their finger at you that you're doing it wrong or, or you blew it. You should have moved here 28 years ago like I did. There's a small percentage of that going on and regular folks like myself just let it roll off their shoulder. Who cares what that guy says? You know, I could care less. I'm just bringing it up. I've said it 10 times now. You do you. Watch these videos, my channel, whatever. Just like I did, I probably prepared two, three years. I think I came over here and I don't even remember, 2013, something like that. And I was, yeah, okay, in 2022, I'm pretty sure that's where I'm going. I've visited at that time 80, 90 countries and I'm over 100 now. And I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna find a place I, I like better to first retire abroad. And it's worked out great. But I watched the different channels and some were a little bit more reasonable than others, and that's what I try to do. I'll say things like, uh, well, you can look at this condo. It, it, it's 28 meter, and it's the most affordable. That's a lot of people's initial, not reaction, but initial planning, especially if they're moving over here on a very small pension, is I will be fine in the absolute smallest room on and on. And that's fine, but you are oftentimes signing a 12-month contract. So it's, what's the old saying, penny wise and pound foolish? For 100 bucks a month to get more square footage, and I don't believe you're making a mistake, paying an extra whatever it is, two, $300, and it's still a very reasonable five, six, $700 a month for a beautiful apartment, which in Sydney, Australia, might cost $3,000 a month. I, I know it does in San Diego. So that's a nice compromise. Me, I'm somewhere in the middle. I want, I definitely want air conditioning. I want a little bit extra space I'm willing to pay, in my case, 100 bucks more a month for. But I'm not going to pay $1,500 for my apartment because it has shiny gold and marble. I'm okay with a 20-year-old building. If you want the shiny gold and marble, will you do you? I always drove an affordable car and I would drive it for 10 years, um, 11 years, whatever it was. Other people I worked with or people around me, they were way into their cars and spent five times as much on whatever it was than my little compact car. But I was always getting on a plane and going somewhere. That's what I wanted to do. I could care less about my car. But if uh, my primary focus was not wasting a lot of money traveling around the world, yeah, a nice car is uh, nice to have. And it's the same here in Bangkok, Pattaya, Chiang Mai. It'd be the same anywhere you move abroad. It's just here, it's smaller decisions. 
do you want this apartment for $300 or this apartment for $500 or do you want a $1,500, whatever it is, 200 square meter apartment? It, it's all here, but to be honest, the difference between a $500 place and a $750 place, it doesn't really matter. I, I, it's, that's not earth shattering money. If, if you want to spend that, spend that. I personally would rather spend that extra 500 and I spend a whole bunch more than 500 on going out and uh, going to different cities and all. So I try to keep it reasonable with where I live, but those are very personal decisions. Don't listen to anybody. If it's a YouTuber or somebody in the comment section on you need to do this or you're doing it wrong, that, that just is wrong for them to even say that. And I think I've said it twice and then I'll wrap this rant up, but that same person who's leaving comments on Facebook or Reddit, whatever it is, that uh, you're dumb for spending more than $1,500 living in Thailand... That person only has $1,500. That's why he's saying that. Or maybe he has $1,700 and he's saving $200 a month and uh, he thinks you ought to be doing the same. He doesn't know what your personal finances are. And as far as the comments that you're still trying to live like a Westerner, you must be blowing money on bar girls, on and on and on. He doesn't know what you're spending your money on. And even if you want to blow it on bar girls, that's your choice. You're not, in my view being foolish for do doing so, you're doing what you want to do. Who am I to tell anybody how to live their life? And I don't really think anybody should tell anybody else how to live their life. And also, like I said in the past, if uh, that same person is giving you or me criticism on, on living above our means, if they're spending any more than 500 US dollars, I'll, I'll round up to 700 US dollars, then they are wasting money because your average Thai person is living on way less than 1,000 US dollars a month. They just are. So if you're spending $2,000 a month, you're spending money like crazy. And as far as I'm concerned, spend that $2,000 a month. Spend the three, spend the four. Have a good time. Enjoy your life. We're all ahead of the game. And even spending 5,000 whole US dollars a month, that is a fraction of what many of us are living on in the United States. I like wandering around this Ikea and it's always very popular. I just maybe a lot of people window shopping. It's a nice air conditioned place to come. Oh, they're selling tons of stuff. The lines are huge down below. But it's just, uh, since it opened, it's kind of a nice family vibe, I guess. People just out checking out the new couches and I guess it's no different than the Ikea in the US. I mean, we go in there and waste an hour and walk out with a cheese grater. So I just kind of felt like uh, having this talk. I'm certainly not trying to irritate anybody. Once again, even the people that uh, want to leave a comment that, uh, no, I think you're overpaying and on and on. Eh, you're welcome to say that. I 100% disagree. And yeah, I, I, I'm not saying there's a, a lot of people out there that are going to take the leap and move over to Thailand and they're going to sit there feeling terrible because some guy at the barbershop or local pub is uh, telling them how they just wasted $1,000 compared to how they have did it right for the past 10 years. I think most people that kind of have their stuff together and, and move to the other side of the world, there's all kinds of people in the world, and, and there are plenty of people that like to just sit there telling you how uh, they know how to do everything correct. If you don't believe me, go on to, who is it? I think it's just called Thai Visa Facebook group. And I'll say 50% of the comments are just nasty little trolley comments. Just guys that have been talking about Thai immigration for the past, whatever it is, two years or 20 years. And I'll, I'll grant it to them. They're an expert in Thai immigration, but they're also an expert oftentimes in, in just being a jerk to somebody who is uh, not an expert in Thai immigration and might ask a simple question or just say something 10% wrong and they just can't wait to attack that person rather than just say no big deal it's it's not the TM7 form it's the TM47 form you left off a four there just relax and instead of the old comment well ho, if you go in there with a TM7 they're just gonna laugh at you and kick you right out of the office because you don't know the difference between a TM7 and a TM47 like I do so just ignore those people. They're the same jerk 
that was in the UK or the same jerk that was in California, they've just moved over to Thailand now and, and they like writing on Facebook every night. And they also have a pretty popular little snack bar. What is that? 39 baht ice cream cones. And upstairs is a restaurant where you can get the Swedish meatballs. Oh, hey, I want to thank every single person. I've got over 10,000 subscribers. That's amazing to me. Who's watched my channel, many of them, since way back when I was uh, running around Mexico, still living in California. I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate everybody that leaves comments, even comments I disagree with. I will politely tell you I disagree and I might even make a whole video like I just did explaining why I disagree and more I made this video for uh, I guess just letting people know to be prepared when you come over you're gonna catch a little bit of flack and in, in, if it's Facebook groups or like I have mentioned just a guy sitting on a bar stool next to you even if you don't spend a lot of time in the bar, it'll be an immigration. I, I can't go to immigration without some guy next to me. Can you believe how stupid they run this place and on and on? And I just nod my head. You know, I don't disagree with the guy or whatever, but he's just not prepared. I've gone in as prepared as could be and just never had a problem in immigration. As he's sitting there scribbling out a form he should have did a week ago and in my military background made three copies of and on and on he's trying to fill the form out on his knee because he didn't even bring a clipboard and he wants to complain about what a terrible system it is so that hopefully will not be you just be prepared as best you can and things will go smooth so i'll be running around bangkok and and doing the best i can to show you some daily living and hopefully that'll help somebody if you're two, three years away from retiring, trust me, you're going to blink your eyes and it's going to feel like six months just went by. So keep watching these videos. If it's me, other channels, whatever, learn from our mistakes or learn from the correct things we did. Things are going to change, especially when it comes to immigration. I, I made up how to get a non-O for retirement visa. I made it very, very, very clear. I'm in Bangkok. It's whatever it was, November of 2023 and things will change. I am 100% sure come 2025, that video's still out there. I'm not gonna take it down, it's a popular video. But as many times as I said, it is 2023 and things might change, I'm still gonna get a dozen comments on, you're an idiot, it's completely changed from what you said or they want two of those forms instead of one and on and on. Again, I just ignore those people in life. So you do the same when you come over. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.